Welcome again. In this video, we're going to look at the fabric encapsulations. And first of all, we're going to take a look at LISP. Locator ID separation protocol is an industry standard protocol described in the RFC 6830. LISP was originally conceived um, as potential solution to address the scalability and address limitation. Uh, you know, the, those are inherent to traditional IP based uh, networks uh, used on the internet. Um, so basically, LISP solves the, these limitations by separating the reachability info into the routing locator, which is RLOC, and endpoint identifier, that is EID. Uh, this separation allows for the better scale and more agile networks because the actual Endpoint IP address can be abstracted and doesn't need to be known by the underlay networks. Um, LISP has many uses in networking today in the WAN and in BGP, and therefore Cisco decided to use that in the SD access. Uh, due to this separation of a LISP on functionality, the use of LISP in SD access allows for for host mobility really and flexibility to span subnet across many many switches uh, without having to um, also span the layer 2 VLAN so in this video we're gonna take a look at uh, the uh, how LISP uh, is encapsulating the control plane in the SD access so at the top we're looking at the original IP packet we've got the uh, IP payload and the IP header and the outer Ethernet header. In the LISP encapsulated uh, packet, we have the payload uh, followed by the IP header and then the LISP header. And that is encapsulated in UDP and then the out outer IP header, which is the, um, the, uh, the underlay IP header and the outer hop by hop Ethernet header. So just to demonstrate how it's going to uh, encapsulate the so payload followed by the IP header of the original packet encapsulated in the LISP header and then in UDP and IP and outer Ethernet header. So this is how the actual underlay, um, underline uh, LISP encapsulation works. So the final outer header Ethernet is the is the hop by hop rebuild of the um, of the path as in layer two. Next, we're going to take a look at the Virtual Extensible LAN, VXLAN, and is a network encapsulation solution that is described in the RFC 7348. VXLAN allows for the transport of layer 2 Ethernet frames over a layer 3 infrastructure and is used in many data center applications uh, nowadays to address the uh, mobility and scalability limitations uh, present in the traditional VLAN based networks, including the support for 16 million VLANs and ability to span VLANs across the geographic boundaries. Cisco is using a VXLAN GPO that is a draft. VXLAN is also the data plane protocol used in the Cisco ACI as well. So similar to um, LISP, uh, it terminates the packet on the like LISP terminates the packet on the R log. VXLAN uses VXLAN tunnel endpoint, which is called uh, VTAP. And in Cisco SD access, VTAPs are represented by the loopback IP interfaces on the fabric nodes. So after endpoint location, that is R log is looked up using the LISP control plane, a fabric node encapsulates all traffic destined for the endpoint in VXLAN with the destination VTAP of the R log. So uh, an important design consideration using SD access fabric or any overlay based solution. So that in the case of LISP and VXLAN up to 56 uh, bytes of header is added. That's another consideration to, to, to consider which may cause fragmentation and connectivity issues if the underlying networks is not configured to handle the large packet. For this reason, the recommended maximum MTU for SD access is 9100 bytes end to end. So this uh, MTU size allows for the 
any encapsulated traffic to properly route through the network without uh, any any fragmentation so here we're going to take a look at the um, how vxlan encapsulation is happening so we have the original packet of ip uh, payload and then the ip header and the original ethernet header vxlan is then encapsulating whole including the ethernet header into the vxlan header and then that is followed by a udp in ip and then the final ethernet header for the hop by hop um, translation of the ip in the fabric in the underlay vxlan header also includes things in the sd access like the sgt security group tags and uh, information like VNs are also encoded in the VXLAN header. So, in in the, in the coming videos, we're going to take a look at uh, in more details how the um, the fabric encapsulation is using VXLAN as a data plane, and we're going to go through some of the examples as well uh, in, in 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 our videos. We can see that the Lisp is not able to encapsulate the layer two header that uh, VXLAN is. So that, that's why it is a selected protocol for the data plane in the SD access. I look forward to see you in the next video. So thanks very much for watching.